Hi, it's Brad Harrison with Audio Arts and Wheatstone with part two of our series on setting up on-air tallies with the Audio Arts DMX. The first thing we need to begin our software setup is the DMX Surface Utility. You probably already installed this utility during the early stages of DMX setup, so let's just run it now. The first thing to do is make sure we're on the right network. To do that in this utility, we'll pull down the Wheaton NIP system menu and we'll select Network. You'll get a dialog box that tells you what your IP address is and if it's in the right range. In this case, 192.168.87 and we're all good. If not, it's possible that another NIC accidentally got selected. In a case like that, you can troubleshoot by clicking the Set NIC button on the right hand end of the dialog. You'll get a box that tells you the name of the currently selected NIC. If it's correct, no problem. If not, change it, click OK. And finally, click OK to exit this dialog. For a couple of reasons, we actually need a source list to finish what we're doing. We can get that by pulling down the WheatNet IP system menu and selecting System Scan. I'll click Start Scan now to begin the process. System Scan will go out and examine all the resources on the system, eventually bringing them back to us in a list over on the right hand side of the screen. When the scan is complete, you'll see Cancel is replaced by Finish. When you click Finish, usually save the information to the disk which makes it remain there until the utility is run again. I'll click Save and I'll click Overwrite because there is already a file there. Now you can see on that list on the right hand side of the screen I've got all my system sources. Other tabs show me the destinations, any salvos, and even other I.O. devices. Cool, now let's find ourselves a control surface. We do that at the bottom of the screen in the device section. I'm going to click Add and when I do I'm going to get a search dialog that's already filled in for me to search for devices of type DMX. I'll just click Locate. If I haven't been working with devices already, I might have to hit the Rescan button in the lower left-hand corner of the window in order to find the control surface. And there it is, right at the top, Surf 01. All I've got to do now is select it, click OK in this dialog, and then I come back and there it is. I've got its name, its IP address, and its device type. Once I click OK, it will be added to this device section at the bottom of the screen. One last detail here. There's a little checkbox at the bottom of the screen right next to the Remove button. That checkbox is for online. You must always have that checked, otherwise any changes you make of the software will not affect the control surface. Now let's go to the VDIP tab on the left side of the screen. This is where we're going to do all the configuration for custom functions for each of the sources. For example, muting the control room monitors or selecting a logic output or a studio tally. We're going to click the Add button to add a new source. Now what it's looking for here is a source number, and we don't have that because it's kind of an internal code. But we've got the list, so we'll just click this Nav button on the right side. It'll bring up the list, and we can select the first microphone source. Double click it, and it'll bring us back to the dialog we were just in, only we'll have the source number already filled in for us. And that looks perfect, so we'll click OK and we will have added that device to the list of devices in the left window. So we'll turn studio tally number one on and we'll remember that we use number one for later. Also while we're in here, we'll turn on the control room monitor mute for this channel. That way when the microphone is activated in the control room, the monitors will turn off preventing a feedback loop. Almost done. We'll come down to the left side, click apply so that the settings will be sent to the control surface. Now how do we make that logical connection between the studio tally we just turned on and the hardware we connected earlier? Watch part 3.